Okay, so today's tutorial is going to be a quick one. It's going to be five easy ways to get drum loops popping in your mix, to get them standing out and sounding as good as they possibly can do. Because sometimes you find a drum loop that you like, you drop it into your mix uh, and you cross your fingers. And sometimes it kind of gets lost, especially if you've got a lot of stuff on the top here, like I've programmed up here. Um, let me just briefly take you through what we've got here. Um, we've got some synths up the top. Um, I kind of put together. Underneath that, we've got some bases, program three, and layer them up. And underneath that, I've got uh, all my drums down the bottom here. And this is the channel that we're gonna be looking at today, or in fact, is going to be the one underneath because this one has all the effects that we're going to be looking at today. Underneath is a version of this drum loop. It's a bog standard Apple loop um, with none of the effects. This is what it sounds like. And today's tutorial is going to be a quick whistle stop tour through a few tricks and tips that you could use to get this popping in your mix. Um, I'm going to try and make it as accessible as possible. So I'm not going to go through every parameter of every plugin we're using. Um, I'm going to go through things fairly swiftly. So if you're ready, first one that we're going to use to get this drum loop sounding a little bit better than it does. Um, slightly obscure plugin. If you click on here, it's under dynamics and it's called an expander. Now, if you've never come across an expander before or you've seen it, but you don't know what it is, really quickly, in a nutshell, it's the opposite of a compressor. And if you think about a compressor, it has a threshold and anything above that threshold, so here it's minus 20, a compressor would compress the signal. It would squish it down a little bit and reduce the dynamic range of your track. Uh, the volume range. What an expander does is it does the exact opposite. So anything above this threshold, it boosts the volume. So it increases the volume range. And why this is really good for drum loops is sometimes the kicks and the snares don't pop out in your drums as much as they should do. So if you stick the expander, it comes in with these presets here. Um, I'm not going to go over these here. I'm going to look at these two though. Ratio is how much it expands it. So if you had it set at one, it would do nothing because it would be a uh, one to one ratio. If you set it the opposite end of the spectrum, it would expand it a lot to make the loud bits very loud and the quiet bits would be very quiet. Um, it kind of comes set in the middle at point 0.8, which is a nice place to start. And threshold, um, you can take it down a little bit just to make sure it captures all those little kicks and snares. Um, but if I press play, and in the middle of this drum loop playing, I'm going to turn it on and you'll see exactly, hopefully you'll hear the kicks and the snares suddenly pop out a little bit more. It's really subtle and it's a really great way of just expanding and getting the hits of your drum loop sounding a little bit more punchy. Um, so expander, number one. Number two, um, I use this on a lot on different um, channels in my mixes to make things sound dirty, but under distortion, there's one called overdrive. And if you don't know what overdrive is, it's kind of more crunchy side of distortion rather than the actual distorted kind of plugin that you can get. Three settings. Number one, output. We're going to leave that exactly as it is. Number two is the tone, and it rolls off the top end of our tone. So if you press play, you'll see the top end of our drum loop is missing now. Sounding very muffled. If we whack that tone knob right up, it stops rolling off those top frequencies. And the third one is drive. And this is how much it dirties up our audio. Um, and if you just want a little bit of 
a little bit of dirtiness, a little bit of extra grit to your drum loops, setting it back 2.5, 3, that kind of level adds a little bit of dirt. Um, again, let's turn it off. I'm going to press play, and as it's playing, I'm going to turn it on and off. You should hopefully hear that it's just... Um, crunched it up a little bit sounds a little bit more gritty um, and if you've got overdrive you can actually use it on different instruments especially from doing any rock or punky kind of tracks it's just great on loads of things stick it on the drums you can put a little bit on vocals you can stick it on guitars it's great um, so number three so expanding number one overdrive number two number three uh, really obvious one eq so if you get our eq up on here what you can do with your EQ is you can use it to pinpoint different frequencies in your drum loops, the same a kick drum, and try and bring it out. So let's have a listen. And you can also do it with your snare, so try and find where your snare is um, and give it a boost. Uh, and I'm going a little bit kind of extreme with some of these uh, effects, but I just want you to hear what they sound like. You can always subtly just dial it down a little bit if you want later on. Um, so number one, expand the number two, overdrive. Number three, a little bit of channel EQ to bring out your kick or your snare. Number four, again, a slightly more obscure one, under specialized, something called Exciter. Uh, and it's really simple. It's hardly got any um, settings at all. And what it does is it saturates the top end. Um, so basically stuff over 2000 hertz on here, or you can drag it up. Uh, and what it does is, uh, I think the company that invented this plugin uh, found it by accident um, back in the old days of, of mucking around with analog and uh, sound and stuff. But what it does is it adds harmonics and crisps up the top end. Um, and really all you need to know is that it starts off about 2000 and you can just drag that up and it just adds a little bit of Christmas to the top end. I'll show you what I mean. I'll turn it off and I'll turn it on. It's really subtle and it just adds like a little bit of crunch up the top end. Um, and all of these, you don't have to add all of these onto every channel you're doing drum loops with. These are just some suggestions you can mix and match, uh, but most importantly, use your ears to hear what sounds good in your mix and what doesn't. So that's one, two, three, four. And then the fifth one, we talked about this before actually in my um, Logic Drummer tutorial video and um, mixing drums. But on if we send this out to a bus channel, our whole drum loop here, Let's choose a spare one. Bus 5 is spare. And we're going to turn the signal up there. And on bus 5, we're going to choose compressor. And this is a really good technique to get under your belt. Um, but what you can do is, if you click on factory default, down the bottom here, compressor tools, um, there's one down the bottom says VCA smashed. And what it basically is, is a super, super heavy um, compression that proper crushes your sound. Let's have a listen to it on its own. That just sounds way too much, but if we set this zero and then we subtly blend it in with our non smashed drums, it just brings out all the um, loudest bits and really gets it sounding um, as full as it can do. Let's have a listen. So there you go. So number one, expander. Number two, overdrive. Number three, EQ. Number four, exciter. And number five, sending it out to a bus channel 
and absolutely smashing it. Um, the other thing that I did that will bring loops to life is just importing a drum loop on its own um, is fair enough you know it's interesting works in your mix but what i like to do a lot of times if i'm using a drum loop is to add extra little bits on the top so here's some hats i programmed earlier here are two toppers which are like little hi-hat style drum loops that i've chopped up and panned in the left and the right And underneath that is a super reverb snare that I've got on the go. And if you add all of those in on top of your drums, it sounds really getting quite good in your mix. Stick it in with everything else. And there you have it, um, five easy ways to get your drum loops popping in your mix and I even chucked in an extra one at the end there um, by layering up some of these drums on top. Uh, if you like the videos, please subscribe. I'm putting out these videos on a regular basis and there's loads of previous videos showing you loads of music production tutorial tips, techniques and ways to get your track sounding um, as good as they possibly can do. So if you like these videos, please click subscribe. Um, and there'll be new ones out soon. Thanks, bye.